Good day, everybody. This is Martin John, and I am here to present Dow of the Day. For those of you who don't know what Dow of the Day is, it is um, a show where I focus on the Dao De Ching. The Dao De Ching is an ancient text that talks about the Dao, Dr. Rao, here on here on Wisdom and other platforms as well, talks about Brahman. And Dao, Brahman, they're the same thing and it is the universal nature or it's the yeah universal nature of the universe it is it is the nature of all things it is within all things you know i might use words like void or uh yield and other things like that but really it's it's within each and every one of us there's no limit to it um you know i talk to a lot of people about some of my philosophy of living and you know it it can step on some toes because a lot of people like to have good and bad, right and wrong, and, and, and all of these things. And, and really just letting go of that, letting go of the idea that there is a right and wrong, um, really allows people to be who they are. And so when we look at the Tao, when we look at the Tao Te Ching, um, it's, it's filled with just wisdom about how to be. And what we really want in life is to live a more reasonable life. And living a reasonable life is not asking others to change, but making sure that we do the changing that needs to happen with us. Because we can't stop other people from changing. They are going to be and do what they are and what they do. And so it's not to say we shouldn't try to change the world, right? Like. The thing that pops into my head because i was invited to be a part of a to be on a podcast recently and and i'm really considering not being on that podcast because um because so much of it revolves around these things are bad and uh and 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 i can't i can't really abide that i really got to listen to a couple more episodes to make sure that that is the direction they go but i'm considering not being on it because it doesn't I, it would be a very, it's a very difficult thing when somebody revolves around, like creates a world around an identity in which things are good and bad. And then you want to go on and say that, oh, you know, like, well, nothing's bad. You know, then they start taking offense because they think things are bad. And, and that's a really difficult place to be. And when we talk about the Tao, we're not talking about good and bad. We're talking about the universal nature of things. No gazelle is going to be angry at a lion for killing their friend. They're going to be sad for the loss of their friend, but they will understand and move on. And the lion isn't a part of that. My experience in the dark retreat, I got stung by a scorpion. That didn't affect my experience. I mean, it affected the experience I had in the dark retreat, but it did not affect how I experienced the dark retreat. That is just part of it. Just like I was going to experience darkness, this experience allowed me to experience the pain and the poison of a scorpion. And there's nothing wrong with that. There was nothing wrong with that. I wasn't being abused. I wasn't being hurt. It hurt, but I wasn't being hurt, right? I wasn't the victim of having been hurt. So, um, I don't know what I want to pick today. I'm, you know, like I get to pick numbers to read and No, this is an interesting one. I was looking at, you know, the title, An Invitation to Conflict, number 69. If you have a number between 1 and 81 you'd like to select, please step up and, and I would love to have you. Uh, in, in the meantime, I'm going to read An Invitation to Conflict, to Conflict. That's, that, that's how you would pronounce it. An Invitation to Conflict. In Conflict. The master will never host aggression. She would much prefer to be the guest. 
and relinquish space rather than claim it. This allows the host space to exhaust themselves without the master having to weaponize anything. Wanting to control through aggression is foolish. This underestimates conflict and its results. When you choose to conflict with another, you look down on them and lose the three lessons. By creating an enemy, you become an enemy. When two forces oppose each other, the one who relinquishes wins. So this referenced three lessons. And three lessons was actually something I read a couple days ago. And the three lessons being compassion, moderation, and humility. So let's look at that um, in, in line with this really quick. Um, and then I'm going to get to joyously creating. And uh, in one moment, I just want to read these three lessons. When you choose to conflict with another, you, loo you look down on them and lose the three lessons. Those three lessons being humility, moderation, and compassion. And you don't get an opportunity to, um, to engage those things because you're looking down on someone. So you're not going to be humble in their presence. You're not going to be compassionate and you might not be moderate. Hello. Hey, Martin John. It's Sorrente on my Android. Oh, it's Sorrente. How you doing? <laughs> doing good, baby. Doing good. good I, just, right? I want to say hi because I actually am awake when you're I'm, awake. I'm glad you're up. Good. Look at you. Yeah, it's always good. How uh, how's how's everything going out by you? I know there's been <laughs> lots of lots of transitions happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, my so I'm in Florida <laughs> right now. Oh, okay. Um, taking care of my friend's kids, and she'll be back on Friday, so I'll be flying back to Vegas Saturday, um, and then I'll be back in Vegas for a hot minute. We're currently relocated at a hotel um, yeah. during um, the reconstruction process because we found out that it's pretty much the entire house, like living room, dining room, like the master, all of that. <laughs> really? So we have to redo everything, pretty much, except for two rooms and a bathroom. Oh, oof, I know yeah. about that. Like I got, I have so much like, I, I, cause I just got this place and it's just like, there's water, water everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're currently going through. And, but I'm happy we're going through it, not getting stuck in it, but through it. And that yeah, insurance yeah. is covering everything. Yeah. So it makes it super easy. And our dog gets to stay with us at the hotel. So we don't have to always oh, that's put them good. in sitters. Yeah. And, you know, like that's, that's, that's comforting to, to be with your animals, you know? It, it really is. That. I miss my little bubbas. But yeah. I know he's in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's look at a number today. It's been a while since we've, it's been a while since we've talked and I would love to, uh, and you've been in the middle of quite a bit. So let's, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm gonna go with 60. I don't think I've ever picked 60 before or heard it. 60. All right, well, here we go. Wait, is this your version? Or is this, um, which version? This is, is this? this is my version. Yay! Yeah. The so number 60 is. Sorry, entitled... I didn't know if you did it yet. <laughs> yeah. 60 is entitled Combating Evil. When governing anything, use restraint, treat it like cooking a small bit of fish. Getting it perfect takes less than you think. Centering all things in Tao, evil will have nothing to oppose. Returns to, returns to a state of illusion. Yep. Evil, with nothing to oppose, returns to a state of illusion. All harm dissipates in the face of those who know their true selves. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm in the, my place of observation. Because sometimes I'm, my thoughts just start going, and then I can't hear the next line. So yeah. I have to remind myself, ha, huh? observe. We're observing. <laughs> okay, cool. Because everything you're saying is spot on, um, at least to what I've been dealing with and going through yes, kind see. of thing. Um, and 
I've been having to face fears that some of them that I knew were fears and some of them that I didn't know were a fear again. Mm, right. And having to go through it again to remind my brain that, hey, we have data on this already. Hey, this is safe. And even when I don't feel safe, I remind myself, I am safe. I'm home. I'm safe. I'm enough. I'm okay. It's all right. Kind of thing. And um, stay in that balanced state and stay in that place of observation and do my best not to add adjectives and -hmm. judgments on the situations when I really don't know anything like that. I might think I do, but I really don't know. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when I look at this one at this moment, I think about the idea of defining evil, right? Like, like once you, once you define it, it's, it becomes bigger. You know, it's like, if you look at things that happen in your life as being, you know, bad, like once you, once you do that, then you give it so much more power with that, with that adjective, with that, with that describing thing. It's like, you know, this first line, when governing anything, use restraint. You have to govern yourself through this time. Mm-hmm. And you know, I will say this, when you said that, I thought of sugar and I, how I've been saying, sugar is bad, sugar is bad, sugar is bad. And I'm like, no, I'm putting upon it. So I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Now, next to my next thought, so I can think this better is, hey, Sharente, sugar is fuel and there's nothing wrong with sugar. The thing is, is that some of all and all of nothing, everything is good in moderation. Is yeah. And, you and saying, are you? you know, like so much of my language revolves around this word influence. Like when you eat sugar, you are, you know, it, it has a strong influence on your body. You know, yes, it, it is. you know, like just like caffeine, it has a strong influence on your body. Just like crack has a strong influence on your body. And when when you engage in things that have a strong influence on your body or your life, then you're giving up your ability to uh, be moderate. I can see that. Yeah. Because it's a repeated behavior that gets you to the point of where you can then say it's taking over your life and then you're at that place of quote unquote addiction. Right. You know, like it's, it is, it, and addiction really is about this idea of, okay, you are under its influence. Now we are under the influence of so many things, you know, I mean, I've taken that mm-hmm. to, uh, I've taken that phrase to a degree that a lot of people would like tend to disagree with me. And, and they, they, they do. Um, the idea that like, we're under the influence of our parents, we're under the influence of the school system and whether or not you agree with that. We're influenced you know, by everything. Right. Absolutely. And, and our truth is that we are not this mind and body and all of that influence exists solely in the mind and body. And yet we are more than that. We are God. And when we can, when we can let go of that, and maybe we think of sugar as evil, right? When maybe we look at those things as bad, but when we stop opposing them, that evil or that fear or that thing that's bad returns to a state of illusion, as it says here, centering all things in Tao, not in the body and the mind. Evil with nothing to oppose returns to a state of illusion. I got you. It just, the visual depiction of what you just said did what it did. And I got you. I, and yeah. I get what you're saying. And I will say this is that for me, I can see how that has applied when it came to sugar, because I hear, I know yesterday I wild because I'm, I'm with kids and I was like, you know, what? I'm a wild today, but I generally don't. I'm very, very mindful of making sure I'm eating all the food groups kind of thing, mm-hmm. not just the starches, but a little bit of everything. 
Mm -hmm. and um, checking all that stuff. And I didn't realize that that sugar thought was in the ether, but it's something that I do have, how do I say this? I do have to, that I do have to continually work on to release it because of how much I said it to myself. Right, right. Um, Kind of thing, you know? You know, it's really like, you know, having come from addiction and stuff like that, like I look at so much as withdrawal, you know, like I was, you know, I've had a relationship with someone for a long time. And then I was like, you know what, like, we need to take some distance from each other, because it's just not healthy. And um, for me, and so I need distance, I wasn't saying anything about her, I was just like, I need this. And, you know, three days in, I'm hurt. And I'm hurting, because I'm addicted. And I need to withdraw. That withdrawal is good. And we have to go through that withdrawal because the more we, because if we, I'm I'm not saying like cold turkey is good or bad or anything like that with things, but we have to recognize that when we're trying to change something in our life and when we're trying to change, even the way we think about an evil, like sugar or something else, like there's going to be a withdrawal phase. And when we're under the influence of something like a relationship or sugar or drugs, that drug is thinking for us. And we've allowed that drug to think for us for some time. And so when we go through withdrawal, what's going to happen is that thing is going to think for us and it's going to, you know, that's what Stockholm syndrome can be, you know, like where we, where, where you, where you talk good and you, and you support the the person who's kidnapping you because you're you're in a state in which that's the most protective. Mm-hmm. That's the safest option that you can think of in that moment. So you're going to do what you got to do to survive. Right. And when you are under the influence of that, you you appease it. Just like when you're under the influence of sugar, it's like, that thought of like, oh, I need a piece of sugar. I need a little sub sub, you know, like I need this or I need that. Like in a relationship, I need to talk to you or whatever. Like all of that is coming from that place of withdrawal, that place of under the influence and being under the influence. I see what you're saying. And plus, what can I buy this down today? What's that? Your DAO, where can I buy? Where can you buy it? You can, it, it'll be, it'll it, like within the next month or two, it's going to be, I got a couple more notes. Like the, the, all of the, all of them are there. Um, I just got to write a couple notes and then I'm going to go and self publish and stuff. So just so I don't, yeah. just so I can get it on the market quick. Just let me know when you do it because I would love to support you in this way because I would love to see what you wrote. That'd be great. And and I'm going to be making a Dow of the Day app as well with uh, some of these recordings and stuff that I that that I've made. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So, like, if you pick 60, you might you might hear uh, hear this conversation again. <laughs> You know, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking different things and I'm, and I'm, I'm still building it. Uh, I'm, I'm applying for a job. So there's a a couple other things and that, that might, if, if that goes through, I might be able to have uh, the financial stability to be able to self-publish rather than try and, you know, then I can just get it out and it'd be available. Yeah. Uh, So yeah, I thank you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The last line here just really kind of simply says, all harm dissipates in the face of those who know their true selves. That is um, your true self, once again, not being the body or mind, your true self being beyond that, that addiction. I will say absolutely. And then I will say this is that right now, as we're speaking, and as this version of myself, I feel completely in my alignment. Yeah. For the first time. I don't feel like I am not safe in the world. I do not feel like I'm not enough. I don't feel like I'm not worthy. I do not feel like I am not smart. I do not feel like I'm an imposter. I know I'm just me. And that is perfect as yeah. I am. And that has given me this place and space in my mind of safety and openness 
so that I can use that openness however I please, whether it's for people to come in and me to help them transmute some things, or Mm -hmm. if that is to just have a conversation and just have all our minds open (laughs) (laughs) kind of thing. And it's just, it's a really awesome place to be able to not have to be on fight or flight. It's really yeah. awesome not to have to be on fight or flight because I don't. I'm done fighting. I'm done freezing. I'm done doing all those things. Good. I am yeah. the, the newer version of me, and like I said, I love your now version, and I thank you for always being an open vessel. Oh well, I appreciate it, and yes, like I, 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 you know, like I'm. I think this is a really great version of the Dow. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it gets received. But um, I am, you know, like I'm just about done with all my notes. A friend of mine is going to help me design the book and stuff, and then I'm going to push it out. I love it. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay, well, if anybody else has a number between 1 and 81, I got my DAO in front of me. I mean, if you'd like to use a different DAO, I would be happy to, um, a different rendition or translation. I am going back to 69, where I started, and, and we're going to read that one more time. Just kind of get us situated back in uh, number 69, in conflict. The master will never host aggression. She would much prefer to be the guest and relinquish space rather than claim it. This allows the host to exhaust themselves without the master having to weaponize anything. Wanting to control through aggression is foolish. This underestimates conflict and its results. When you choose to conflict with another, you look down on them and lose your three lessons. By creating an enemy, you become an enemy. When two forces oppose each other, the one who relinquishes wins. There are a couple things that really stood out to me here. It's the wanting to control through aggression is foolish and underestimates conflict and its results. You know, conflict is never um, something that you want to engage in. Conflict is is always dangerous for somebody. Um, there's no reason to conflict to conflict with another. It is you that are upset, or it is them that are upset. Like if they get upset and come to you, you relinquish, you yield. You say, okay, there's no reason to conflict. There's no reason to, like, of course there is defend yourself. Sure, when when it happens, you strike a blow. If that's what needs to happen, you do what you need to do when you need to do it, but there's no need to conflict and agitate something, right? Because if you do, you're underestimating what conflict is. You know, I get in relationships where, where or I've gotten in relationships where people like to argue and they tell me, arguing is how you know you have a good relationship. And I said, well, that's not how I do it. <laughs> you know, there was that one verse we talked about. It's like, in, in any conflict, you're always going to create an other. And is that good enough for you? Is it good to create an other, to have resentment about this, like linger? Because it's going to. So let's go through this line by line now that I've kind of gone through. And, and remember those three lessons, moderation, humility, and um, compassion. You lose those in conflict. So here we go, an invitation to conflict. In conflict, the master will never host aggression, period. Will never host aggression. I love the way they say that. In conflict, the master will never host aggression. I think I actually hosted aggression yesterday. I was in a conversation talking to someone, they responded, and all I had to do was receive that, and I didn't. I did do a little of pushing back. I hosted aggression. And that wasn't, I wasn't pleased with that. I didn't like that I did that. She would much prefer to be the guest and relinquish space rather than claim it. And that's the thing. When we are faced with aggression, can we yield? 
to that immediately. As soon as we say something, someone says something else and we say, oh, okay, well, this is, I, and I, can, I can hear that or, or whatever. We don't have to lie. We can be honest, but we don't have to offer a retort. We don't have to offer something that challenges it. We can just be like, I can see that. Yes, many people think that and, and I appreciate that. That's where I would have liked to have been yesterday. But yesterday I decided to host con conflict and I see that. And I'm grateful for me picking 69 today because of that, because it shows me like the difference. I can feel that I hosted. And when I hosted, they decided that they would, they would engage. And they eventually um, relinquished and it, it wasn't me. And that's, that's, that's not how I want to engage. This allows the host space to exhaust themselves without the master having to weaponize anything. I like that, right? I don't know that I exhausted myself. I think just wound out, but I want to give the host enough space so that they can just say what they need to say, exhaust the things that they need to say, not exhaust themselves as becoming tired, but exhaust their sources, exhaust their resources, exhaust their, their, like they, they just let them say what they say. It doesn't matter. And I don't have to weaponize anything. I don't have to turn anything into an aggression. And I did do that. And I see that and it's not who I want to be. It's not how I want to be. Wanting to control through aggression is foolish. This underestimates conflict and its results back to what, what you know, that, that line that really popped out at me is this idea of like underestimating conflict. Any conflict is, you know, not appreciating the life that I am leading, not appreciating the time that I have, not appreciating the life that I am engaging with the other person. Any conflict is in that space. When you choose to conflict, you know, when you choose to underestimate the damage conflict can do, so when you choose to conflict with another, you look down on them and lose the three lessons. You look down on somebody when you, and it's true. I think I did this twice yesterday now that I'm thinking about it. The second time was better, but I'm seeing this now. It's like when you choose to conflict with another, you look down on them and lose your three lessons. What are your three lessons? We talked about that earlier. That's from verse 67. It's just two verses before this. And we talk about compassion, moderation, and humility. When you look down on someone, you're not compassionate with them because you're looking down on them. You've created the other. When you look down on someone, you're not moderate with them. You're over the top. Why? Because you're in conflict and you're looking down on them and you don't think they their, their value is as much as you. When you look down on them, you lose your ability to be compassionate. You lose your ability to be moderate. You lose your ability to be humble. Why would you be humble on someone you're looking down on? It's ridiculous. By creating an enemy, you become an enemy. And you're inviting this conflict, you know, like, if you get involved in that, you invite a conflict and they are become your enemy and now you are their enemy. And I think this really relates back to 67 strongly. And I'm trying to see if 67 is the one I think it is. No, it's not. It relates back to another one that's really deep. Uh, it's really beautiful how it, how it talks about like conflict and, and enemies and, and holding your ground like why are you doing that when two forces oppose each other the one who relinquishes wins yeah they might be able to walk away from the conversation and pump their fists because they they didn't back down but the one who relinquishes the one who yields is the one who wins the one who is 
And what do you win? You, you win your own integrity. You win your life. You win it all. Without having to have that conflict held above you, held over you. What a nice verse. I'm really glad to have gone through it. I think it's poignant to have gone through today, especially after my experiences yesterday. So thank you, Dao De Ching. And thank you, Sharente, for coming up and reading 60 with me. We talked about combating evil. And, you know, we didn't really talk a whole lot about that idea of like getting it perfect takes less than you think. Like treat it like cooking a small bit of fish. I really like that line. It's a, it's, it comes out of nowhere because, you know, a lot of people don't know how to cook. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're cooking like small fish, um, you got to leave it the fuck alone and it, don't leave it on long, right? You just want it real quick. You know, fish sometimes takes m moments to cook. So it's not, it's, it's, you, you can't overdo it. If you overdo it, you are going to ruin it. And if you have to govern something, your life, your emotions, anything, use restraint. Let them be. Don't invest in them. Just let them be. There's no good. There's no bad. You're just as you are. Thank you so much. If anybody wants to join me for Dow of the Day, step on up and pick a number between 1 and 81. If not, I am going to start to sign off. My name is Martin John. If you like the work that I do here on Wisdom and on the Dow, please uh, consider sending me a tip at Venmo at Martin John underscore Garcia. I am here to, you know, present Dow and present life as it is truly within your soul. It's not your body. It's not your mind. Those things are just kind of manifestations of what's going on deeper. I appreciate you for coming up and um, spending some time with me. I'm Martin John, the Recovery Mentor, and until next time, keep recovering yourself.